We are here with uh, Jack uh, Shostak, a professor uh, at Harvard in uh, biology and biochemistry and Nobel uh, laureate uh, 2009. And we want to put him some questions about the, his work uh, with the origin of life. Starting from uh, uh, the big problem, uh, was born first uh, the egg or the chicken? <laughs> Well, I mean, that has been a problem that's confused people for many years. And so the real puzzle is how did life begin how, in uh, some series of simple steps that led to what we have now, where all the parts of living organisms depend on each other. Obviously, it couldn't start that way, so there has to be a simple way to begin. Mm -hmm. So the very simple begin in your hypothesis, is uh, some clay, some RNA, and a few other things, I think. Well, uh, so you can look at it from different points of view. Uh, on the one hand, you need the environments that you find on a planet. So some environments to make some chemicals, other environments probably will make other chemicals. Maybe a third environment, they can come together. Mm. There could be roles for clays or other minerals. There's a lot of organic chemistry. But eventually things assemble in, into something that looks like a cell with a membrane and some RNA or something, some genetic polymer. Mm. Uh, and then once you can start evolution, okay. then you're really off to making modern biology. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, in my understanding, the very important part of your contribution to this problem was to focus on uh, RNA as a, a possible multitasking molecular that can do many things. So I think that understanding of RNA goes back way before me. There were uh, several very smart people in the 1960s who hypothesized that RNA could both carry genetic information and catalyze chemical reactions. So people like Francis Crick, Leslie Orgel, uh, Alex Rich, Carl Woods, they all had this idea but there was no evidence that made that look reasonable until the 1980s. And then when Tom Cech and Sid Altman discovered that RNA really could be a catalyst, it could be like an enzyme, mm -hmm. then that kind of made everything simple, right? Mm -hmm. Because now we can really think of a simple cell with RNA molecules mm -hmm. acting as enzymes, but also being the molecules of heredity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you think that if we have enough uh, self-replicating RNA, and if we have enough good membranes, we can build up a first uh, artificial cell? Yes, that's what we're trying to do in my lab. Um, we think we, well, we've already shown how we can make membranes grow and divide, so that part of replication actually looks pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, getting RNA molecules to replicate before there were enzymes is a little more tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, people have been working on this problem for more than 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Leslie Orgel and his students and colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a long history, but uh, you know, we've started to focus on that problem and, and along with several other labs. And, and there's been a lot of progress. So. Mm -hmm. I think we can really see how it might happen and how everything could come together with replicating RNA inside a replicating cell membrane. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it will be possible to build such systems in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it should be possible to understand how they could form on the early Earth, which is really the puzzle we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. I see. A last question about uh, uh, life itself. Mm, you, you are studying the transition between uh, chemistry and biology, but uh, uh, this transition has a very special feature that is uh, uh, feeling. So uh, living organisms have this special quality of feeling something, always feeling something. You think it's a biological uh, transition or something else? Well, I think that the very first, most primitive cells uh, relied on their environment 
for everything, right? For the energy, for the nutrients, so that they could grow. Once you have the ability to evolve, then obviously it's a great advantage if you can sense different aspects of the environment and respond. Mm -hmm. So I think that these qualities of uh, sensation and, and, and response are, are things that evolved over time. Obviously, they're uh, very highly evolved in all modern life. Mm -hmm. um, they probably started off very simple at mm -hmm. the beginning. Uh, but I think they, they're something that's evolved over time. Mm. I see. Very interesting. And uh, another last question <laughs> about uh, Francisco Varela's work. Uh, it has uh, still some uh, influence. Uh, there is uh, some inspiration. Uh, the group of uh, the origin researcher, they call you like this. Especially people like, like Pierre Luigi Luisi, I think, yeah, is uh, right. 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 Um, so I've had many discussions uh, with, with Luisi about these um, topics. And they do focus on a very interesting aspect, which is that these systems, especially the membrane system, but also the RNA, are, they're self-assembling. Right? There's properties of the molecules that make everything come together mm -hmm. to form membranes, to form genetic materials. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it also looks, now that we know more about it, that there are properties of those molecules and of simple environments that can allow these systems to grow and divide and, and transform gradually mm -hmm. into what we can recognize as life. Uh, at the beginning, I think life was so simple that people might have different ideas about what to call alive and what's just chemistry. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a, a gradual transition, okay. in, in my opinion. Okay. Thank you very much, Jack. It was wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice talking to you. Thank you.